sorry trying to keep this super professional as a video, but when you understand just how nuts the big tobacco industry is, you will realize that this is a plan. This is a plan. Recently, I've noticed a trend in my really successful type A friends. The cycle is always the same. They throw away their elf bars just to buy new ones three days later. And these are my friends with the most willpower. They have a five to nine before their nine to five. So why can't the people even with the strongest willpower quit their elf bar habit? I am here to answer that question. So what is an elf bar? I've bought one for illustrative purposes. Elf bars are a disposable vape or e-cigarette. Vapes first came onto the market in 2008, but elf bars made their introduction in 2018. They're made in China. You will probably recognize them even if you're not a smoker because they just look like brightly colored highlighter pens. There are many flavors but the majority of them are sweet. You can buy menthol, fruit flavors, and then flavors like cotton candy or elf bull. I go back and forth, but ye old faithful coming in at number one, kiwi passion fruit guava. Watermelon, absolute god tier. I like mango. Favorite flavor would be banana ice. It's all about banana ice babes. The one that I'm holding is a 20 milligram bar. They are the most popular. They start at about £4.99 and they have around 600 puffs. A 20 pack of Campbell's is more than double the price and has around 24 grams of nicotine per pack. The brand says that one elf bar is the equivalent of 20 cigarettes as both contain a similar amount of nicotine. However, there is some disagreement on this, which we shall come to later in the video. So they use synthetic nicotine, which is lab derived as opposed to tobacco derived. There is virtually no difference between the two. However, tobacco derived nicotine is more heavily regulated by government so these little disposable synthetic nicotine bars fall into this gray area. So this lack of regulation when it comes to synthetic nicotine has led to an explosion onto the market of sweet flavored vapes, such as our trusty elf bar. So how many people are smoking them? More than a fifth of 18 to 35 year olds in the UK define themselves as smokers in 2022. And around 10% of 18 to 34 year olds define themselves as vapors. The global vape market is valued at $22.8 billion and growing. One study, and this blows my mind, found that under 1% of 18 year olds were using disposable vapes at the beginning of 2021, and that number has risen to 57% by the beginning of 2022. That's absolutely insane. So what makes elf bars in particular super addictive? The main reason that you might guess is nicotine but not in the way you'd imagine. So as we all know, nicotine is the addictive ingredient in cigarettes and vapes. Elf Bar's advertising would suggest that a 20 milligram bar contains the same amount of nicotine as around 20 cigarettes. However, experts dispute this. The science on how nicotine is absorbed via smoking versus via vapes is contested and not fully understood in the scientific community. So if absorbed in the same way as cigarettes, a 20 milligram bar could be the equivalent of 20 cigarettes, as cigarettes contain approximately one milligram of nicotine each. However, if it is absorbed differently into the system, then one 20 milligram bar could be closer to around 50 cigarettes worth of nicotine. So the majority of vape retailers that I researched said that one elf bar is the equivalent to around 48 cigarettes. This changes the game for casual smokers or people who rarely smoked before they found elf bars. Casual smokers don't tend to smoke an entire pack of cigarettes on a night out. However, according to my TikTok comments, many people will smoke an entire elf bar on a night out. It's just so easy to smoke a sweet flavored disposable vape that costs you $4.99 without realizing how strong it is. Something really interesting that I didn't know until I started researching this video is that elf bar actually make a 10 milligram and a zero milligram nicotine free version. However, only the 20 milligram is available at most news agents. So consumers don't get to choose how much nicotine they're getting. This might be obvious, but nicotine is very addictive. Nicotine withdrawal syndrome is typically characterized by irritability, difficulty concentrating, and cognitive impairments. And I can imagine those who have experienced nicotine withdrawal would use a lot more choice words. Experts recommend treating nicotine addiction with similar strategies to treating drug addiction, such as using alternative forms of nicotine to wean off and medication to lessen the symptoms. I was trying to keep this super professional as a video, but when you understand just how nuts the big tobacco industry is, you will realize that this is a plan. This is a plan. For years, big tobacco companies have been optimizing the amount of nicotine that they put into cigarettes for the sole purpose of keeping consumers addicted. This was all revealed in a 1994 ABC News investigation. Cigarette companies were manipulating the nicotine content of cigarettes by removing it and then adding it back in in controlled amounts that would ensure the continued addiction of the smoker. Sandifer confirmed an FDA report that his company developed a tobacco plant called Y1 with double the normal nicotine content but said the new tobacco did not increase the amount of nicotine delivered by its cigarettes. 
I have to read you this quote from a Philip Morris scientist. Philip Morris is one of the five big tobacco companies. The cigarette should be conceived not as a product, but as a package. The product is nicotine. Smoke is beyond question the most optimized vehicle of nicotine and the cigarette the most optimized dispenser of smoke. So now we know that it's common practice for tobacco companies to optimize the amount of nicotine in their products to make sure that consumers stay addicted. So as a business model, it makes perfect sense for ELF to recommend only stocking the 20 milligram bars in all news agents because it keeps them in business. Basically, the nicotine is nicotining and you aren't even aware of it. Let's move on to sugar. Let's start with the less scientific bit. Sugar tastes good. We like sweet things. They're tasty. Elf bars are sweet things. And elf bars come in loads of sweet flavors, which is part of the reason why people like to smoke them. But is there any sugar in them? A study found that aerosols of flavored cigarettes had similar properties to high sucrose gelatinous sweets. And high sucrose products, sugar, you guessed it, is also addictive. A systematic review shows strong parallels between sugar addiction and drug addiction. There's a lot of research to show that there are substantial parallels between sugar and drugs in terms of brain neurochemistry and how they react to each substance. So yeah, it's addictive. It's addictive, we all knew it, but there is now science to prove it. However, with elf bars, isn't it just a flavor? Like it's not getting into my body the same way as eating it would? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. So the research is still early and it's not conclusive, but from the few studies we have, it seems there's a lot we still don't know. I know, bring in the facts. There are very few studies on the sugar content of e-cigarettes. However, and I wanna read this off my laptop so I don't get it wrong. One study found that flavored e-cigarette aerosols produced a fourfold increase in microbial adhesion to tooth enamel and led to a twofold increase in biofilm formation and up to a 27% decrease in enamel hardness compared to unflavored controls. In normal language, the sugar in e-cigarettes is damaging your teeth. We don't yet have evidence to suggest what kind of damage sweetness in e-cigarettes is doing to your body other than to your teeth. I would suspect it's not just your teeth being affected. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. This is just my suspicion. But addictive behaviors are not just about brain chemistry. They're also about your real life your online life, your offline life, what you see, and what we think is cool. And elf bars could also be addictive because you are seeing them everywhere you look. Studies show across the board that if your friends start using e-cigarettes, you're also more likely to start using them. Basically, seeing other people smoke makes you think it's cool. And not only that, but seeing e-cigarettes on social media increases your likelihood of wanting to experiment with them. Not just wanting to experiment with them, but actually using them. So seeing elf bars on a night out and then later on in online content from your friends and influencers is likely to romanticize them in the same way that films and TV romanticize smoking. In terms of the marketing, a huge player in the growth of e-cigarette use is their perception as being healthier than smoking. Studies have also linked this perception to people starting e-cigarettes use having never been smokers before. This comes from a variety of places. It comes from social media, it comes from marketing, and it comes from the government. I'm not gonna deep dive into the risks and benefits of smoking e-cigarettes. I personally think your health, your body, your choice. But just for a bit of background on the health implications of vaping, it has been proved that vaping is less carcinogenic than smoking, but there are a lot of other variables and differences between vaping and smoking that are harder to measure. And we also don't know much about the long-term effects as right now it's impossible to collect that data. On a personal note, I don't think scientists and governments foresaw how heavily e-cigarettes would be used. And having read a lot of research for this video, I don't think the research has caught up to that yet. So even though the use of vapes is regulated in public spaces, I don't think people factored in how this clean image of vaping would end up affecting the way that people vape in their personal spaces, so their houses and their cars. This leads people to almost chain smoke their vapes when they're driving, when they're in the house, when they're working. And knowing this behavior makes me wonder how it will impact future research on the health outcomes of vaping. Anyway, right now, this is the current government advice. In 2015, the UK government put out a statement saying vaping was around 95% less harmful than smoking. And this changed public perception to see vaping in a more positive light. And that clean messaging has a huge impact. It has been shown in multiple studies to make young adults more likely to smoke vapes, even people who never smoked before. So when people wonder why someone who never smoked before might suddenly get addicted to elf bars, this is probably the research I'll point them towards. An elf bar utilizes this idea that vaping is healthier than smoking throughout their marketing. It's in every press release. It is all over their website. Everything they put out emphasizes this clean messaging. The idea that vaping is healthy is evolving into this marketing around wellness and around cleanliness. 
that I don't think anyone could have anticipated, but Elf Bar are on board. Anyway, to review what we have looked at so far, taking into account how much nicotine and potentially sugar there is in each Elf Bar, and the fact that most people are smoking Elf Bars more frequently than they were ever smoking cigarettes, is it any surprise that we are getting more and more addicted without even realizing? And then just sprinkle on top of that, the fact that you're seeing your friends and family use them online and offline, it's a perfect storm. So all this chat about addiction, but how do I know if I'm addicted? It's estimated that having a daily intake of five milligrams or more of nicotine is the threshold for creating and sustaining a nicotine addiction. However, this isn't a hard and fast rule. Some people will find that they become addicted to nicotine at lower levels as well. And there's around one milligram of nicotine per cigarette. So if you're smoking more than five cigarettes in a day, you probably have now got a nicotine addiction. So if we take Elf Bar's statement that a 20 milligram bar is the equivalent of 20 cigarettes at face value, you would have to be finishing an Elf Bar in less than four days for you to be addicted. That means you'd have to battle through nicotine withdrawal when quitting. However, if an elf bar is closer to 48 cigarettes worth of nicotine, which some experts suspect, then if you are finishing your elf bar in under nine days, you probably have a nicotine addiction. And let's get this straight. You're not just getting addicted alone. There are some marketing tactics at play and marketing reaches a whole new level when you learn about big tobacco. Big tobacco is the term used to refer to the major players in the tobacco industry. There are five and these are conglomerates that own nearly all of the cigarettes in the world. Most of the tobacco products in the world are made by five companies. Philip Morris, British American Tobacco, Imperial Brands, Japan Tobacco, and China National Tobacco Company. Big Tobacco are known for their underhand marketing tactics with a less than tasteful focus on women and marginalized groups. I just wanna give one example because it actually shocked me. In the 20th century, women weren't smoking that much. So Big Tobacco made it a point to start targeting women. And they did that by linking smoking to women's freedom, emancipation, and empowerment. In 1929, the American American tobacco company paid for women to do a march similar to the suffragette marches, holding cigarettes and calling them torches of freedom. They walked down Fifth Avenue in New York City for the Easter parades. This was all to help stop the public perception of women smoking as being a social taboo. Big tobacco companies are very interested in vaping. They started up buying e-cigarette brands and creating their own in the 2010s. Views was acquired by British American Tobacco in 2017. Logic was bought by Japan Tobacco in 2015. And Marlboro owner Ultria bought Juul for 13 billion in 2018. There's no information online to suggest that Elf Bar is being bought by one of these companies. However, they will be learning from Big Tobacco's marketing playbook. In terms of traditional marketing, Elf Bar has not got a lot out there. However, they did do a massive campaign across London this summer. I didn't even notice it. Throughout May and June, they featured their rechargeable vape kit on 300 London buses, as well as 147 out of home billboards dotted across the city. And their press release describes Elf Bar's eco-friendly and cost-effective vaping solutions. I think they're trying to clean up their public image. Elf Bar don't have their own Instagram or Twitter accounts, however they have utilised social media marketing through influencers. And it was contentious and maybe illegal. An observer investigation revealed that Elf Bar had been engaging in potentially illegal marketing practices on social media by sending their bars to TikTokers to try without any kind of age guidelines, restrictions, warnings, etc. Many of these influencers were young and some claimed that Elf Bar paid them to review the products on TikTok. Because of the influencers they were choosing, it's suspected that Elf Bar were trying to target young young people with this advertising. So even though it's illegal to advertise smoking products to under 18s, it seems that Elf Bar is still trying to target that market. The packaging and flavor choices would suggest this too. Bright colors, really sweet flavors, Potentially, it's being designed and marketed for a young audience who aren't typical smokers. So this marketing and these adverts may not have reached you. You may not have noticed them on the sides of buses and billboards, but they're probably having a cumulative subtle effect on how often you see Elf Bars and probably creating more dialogue around Elf Bars in the UK. So in addition to all of the classic traits of an addictive product, you're also seeing Elf Bars everywhere, which is giving you visual cues reminding you to smoke. And this attraction is by design. Elf Bar have learned from Big Tobacco how to target groups that might be otherwise averse to smoking. So most of my friends have tried to quit at least once, but haven't been able to stop for longer than a few days or weeks. And some of these people are people who have 
quit smoking before. And my friends are not alone. On TikTok, there is a whole genre of people documenting their quitting Elf Bar's journey. And you can see from the videos that it's taking a huge mental toll on people. So we know why it's hard to quit, but why does it affect us mentally so much? And is there anything we can do to make quitting easier? Let's talk about the myth of willpower. Quitting smoking requires a lot of self-will. Nicotine withdrawal starts around three to four hours after you last smoked. It lasts around three to four weeks in total and it peaks on day three. Withdrawal symptoms depend on the amount of nicotine you consumed, but more nicotine means a worse withdrawal. And as we know, elf bars are full of nicotine and in general, people are finishing them faster and faster, which means your withdrawal symptoms are going to be intense. But if you're really strong-willed, you should find it easier to quit, right? You've done harder things before. Well, science suggests that people who appear to have very strong self-will, AKA type A style people, are actually not having to use their willpower most of the time. In one study from McGill University, the students who exerted the most self-control were not the most successful in accomplishing their goals. It was the students who experienced fewer temptations overall that were the most successful. So what can we learn from this? The people we perceive as being really good at exerting self-control behaviors, they're people who eat very well, study a lot, work out, they're not actually using their willpower a lot of the time to achieve those results. They likely just enjoy those things, which is wild, but it does make sense that humans enjoy different things. When we apply this research to nicotine addiction, we can see that no person is going to be better equipped to deal with nicotine withdrawal than the other. We all fall into psychological self-control traps when trying to quit. And this again, unfortunately, is proven in research. More than 90% of smokers who try to quit each year fail. And the emotional toll of failure and cyclical goal failure hits everyone hard but especially if you have perfectionist tendencies. Studies show that cyclical goal failure can lead to depression and anxiety, along with decreasing your motivation and creating ambivalence towards the goal that you were trying to achieve. It knocks your self-esteem and your motivation. Add that to the potential sugar withdrawal and the visual and social cues that you will be seeing constantly if you're an elf bar smoker and you do have a challenge on your hands. Elf bars are by design really hard to quit. In the words of Kris Jenner, you're doing great, sweetie. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, so I wanted to include one or two things you can do that might make it easier to quit. It could be worth going online and buying the 10 milligram or zero milligram nicotine-free bars. The research suggests that e-cigarette cravings are primarily induced by nicotine withdrawal and secondarily induced by social and visual cues. So having a 10 milligram or zero milligram bar to smoke on your nights out or at work, wherever you usually smoke them, could really, really help. Another thing you can do to tackle visual cues is put your elf bar away when you're not using it. Put it in your bag, put it out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind. And it might also be worth looking into traditional nicotine substitutes such as patches or gum. Go old school and know that past day three, it will probably get easier. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is experimental for me, but I really hope it helps someone. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new around here. I also have a join feature, so if you wanna help me make these videos, please press the button. And thanks again for watching. I am gonna turn this off.